Hello and welcome to Gina. In this video, we'll be looking at using Gina's pathfinding system to create complex roads and paths within our project. You can find this system by creating a new spline and locating the panel called pathfinding. Now it's important to note that this time of recording, the pathfinding system is currently experimental, but make sure that you keep Gina updated to get the latest stable releases of this feature. Now let's see how to use this feature. The idea is to create a new genus spline and start to create nodes. As you can see, the nodes that are being created are linear by default. And as you move them, their tangents are separated. So you can modify the curve. However, the pathfinding panel allows you to create more complex paths by introducing pathfinding into your project. Once enabled, you'll have access to all of these settings and as you create new nodes, Gina will automatically detect the closest path. So there are a few settings in the pathfinding system that you can use to control the outcome. And we're gonna look through a few of these and see what parts of the outcome that they affect. So let's look at the ignore mask setting. This setting lets you control what layers you want the pathfinding system to ignore. And to demonstrate, I have two cubes in my scene. One is the default cube that is set to the default layer and the other is the ignored cube, which is set to my ignored layer that I've created earlier. So going back to our spline, if you want to ignore this layer here, which is the ignored object, you simply select it under ignored mask. And now when you create a path, it will path around one, but not the other. Let's look at another scenario. Let's say we want to path around this mountain and I have one node over here as soon as I control click. Now a valid path couldn't be found between this node and where I clicked. And the reason is because there's either too steep of a slope or there's other parameters that are blocking it. In this case, it's most likely the fact that there's rather a steep slope and the current setting max grade doesn't allow for that. So I'm going to increase the value of max grade and try it again. And now you can see that the limits were included this time and it found a nice closest path around this mountain by going through this slope. Let's say we wanted the pathfinding system to find a more specific path to our destination. Currently, when you go from point to point, the distance between nodes is determined via the cell size that is used to calculate the path. If we want it to be more specific and more narrow, we would lower the size of the cells to find a more specific route. So as you can see, there's more nodes being distributed to get to that path. But if we increase it and go back the other way, it'll take bigger strides to get there. Hence a less accurate path. Now let's say we wanted to create a footpath that goes around this mountain in a very specific way. We would increase the max grade and we'd lower the cell size. That way we can go around slopes, but we can also become very accurate with our pinpoints. And now that we have our path, we could add a carve extension and we could carve into our terrain this way. And that's our footpath. And let's say we wanted to turn this footpath into our road. All you have to do is just add an extension to it, which is the road extension and just lower the width or increase the width. And then you can just carve into the path and you have your road. You also have the ability to limit the min height and the max height of the pathing. So for example, if I had a node here and I wanted to path all the way over here, it would take into account the minimum height that is specified here, so 28. So that means that if I try to create a path inside the river, it won't let me create a path down that direction. So we have this experimental heuristic as well that you can switch between, heuristic B. So if I introduce that, you'll notice slight differences in how it calculates the path. And this can be useful if you're trying to get around mountains and it doesn't look quite right. So this does help for those scenarios, switching between heuristics. So it'll calculate the shortest path a different way. One of the other options we have is a slope strength factor. And this combined with the max grade will provide an interesting output depending on the slope. So currently, I've set it to a strength factor of 1.83 
and the max grade is 30. And as you can see from this point here, it wrapped around this shape, taking into account the strength of the slope. So if I, if I undo that and lower the strength, it goes directly to the object instead of wrapping around. That's because it uses less of the slope, but more of the max grade. So lastly, this system is very useful for creating really intricate road networks. So let's go ahead and create a road and let's enable the pathfinding system. I'm gonna increase the max grade. I'm gonna lower the cell size and I'm gonna to start to create my road network. So as you can see, it's creating really intricate networks based on this pathfinding heuristic. So in summary, Pathfinding is a very powerful feature and it allows for more intricate pathings in your projects. Thanks for watching.